people. Um, <clears throat> it is Aiden Shea here talking about voter suppression in the United States. Yes, it even happens here. And here I have a list with me on my phone. Um, you can't see it on there right now, but this list is a list of all the states that have closed primaries, or semi-closed primaries. Now, before we get into this, we need to talk about what a closed primary means. Now, a closed primary means that people in these states have to be registered uh, with either the Democratic or Republican primary to even vote in these states. Now, yeah, sure, these people could probably be registered with the Libertarian Party if they so choose to be, but that means they could only vote for a Libertarian uh, <clears throat> candidates. And the Libertarian candidate are not very widely known about or voted for anyway. And they're a third party that most people don't even consider voting for. So, since we really only have two major political parties in the United States, that's also limiting us down to what we can choose from. But that's not a big deal, because... The two-party system in America has worked fairly decently for years now, and I don't think anybody really wants to change that. So, we're not going to worry about that at all. <clears throat> uh, instead, we're going to talk about these states now. So, this is why this bothers me. Because, you know, in America there are actually four political parties. One, we have the Democrats, we have the Republicans, we have the Libertarians, and we have the Independents. There are other uh, third parties out there, but why should we really care about them? The only third party that actually does anything is the Li Libertarians. Now, Independents, they might not be affiliated with any party, but they are the biggest voting bloc in the country. And, uh, we don't really talk about them at all, for some reason. Um, well, they're, they might not be the biggest voting bloc in the country, but they are the biggest voting bloc amongst young voters. And they are the biggest voting bloc amongst millennials. So, people always say millennials don't vote. Well, here's the reason they don't vote. They don't vote because they can't vote. They can't vote because they're independents. And, in a year that we're having a presidential election, I think it's very appropriate to talk about this map. Especially on the 4th of July, the one day this country is celebrated the most. And I think the 4th of July might be some Americans' favorite holiday. It's not mine, but that doesn't matter. So, there are 12 states in the United States that have 100% closed primaries. This means no matter what, you have to be registered Democrat and or Republican for your vote to actually matter, which is kind of weird, but it's how it is. Um, and when it comes down to it, we look at these 12 states and we say, look, here's Delaware. Okay, first state in the union. That state, Delaware is the first state that doesn't allow people to vote for uh, who they want to. Who they want to. Uh, bas basically, they're the first state on this list that doesn't allow for independent vote. Uh, so we have Delaware, Florida, Kansas. Kentucky, Maine, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Oregon, Pennsylvania, and Wyoming. Those 12 states do not allow independents to vote at all. If you're an independent in that state, you can't vote until the general election. You, this is only for the primaries. But ironically, the primaries are probably more important than the general election some ways. 
The primaries select the two candidates, Republican or Democrat, who we can vote for. You know, right now we lose are over, so yeah. And now we got Hillary and Donald Trump. Those are pretty much the only two candidates that matter. They're the ones that are going to get all the votes. They're the ones that are going to get what people want them to get. They're the ones that people are going to choose. Even if people do know about the Libertarian Party, what's the likelihood they'll vote for them? I mean, we don't know anything about their platform. So you need to know stuff about the platform in order to vote for them. And people are not willing to go through all the work to do so. Now we're going to talk about states with semi-closed primaries. Semi-closed primary states may allow independents to vote, but it depends on what the party says, for the most part. So if the Democrat and the Republican parties don't agree on independents voting in those states, then they're not going to allow it. Now, of course, this might not be a big problem, but from my personal experience in being an independent voter in Maryland, I had to change from independent to Democrat to vote in this last election in the primary. And that's not right. People should be able to keep whatever a party affiliation, whether it be Democrat or independent, and they should be able to vote on that. So now we're going to talk about states that have um, semi-closed primaries, which means that sometimes they might allow independent to vote. We're going to scroll down there. 21 states to do this. 21. So the first time we had 12, and now we have 21 semi-closed primaries. So let's take a look at that for a number. How many states are actually restricting independence rights to vote? We're talking about 12 plus 21. That's 12 states where independents can't vote at all in the primaries. And that's just wrong. <clears throat> but 21 states where they might have a chance to vote, depending on if they know what their rights are. Or if the parties actually allow them to vote. If the Republicans and Democrats allow them to vote. And that's not okay. Because if we're controlled by people who tell us whether we can or cannot vote, that's not okay. Because we should, as a people, have the right to vote everywhere. So now we're going to look at those 21 states. Alaska, Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Connecticut's a little bit strange, but still. Idaho is another one that's strange, but again, they're on this list, so I'm going to say it. Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Maryland, Massachusetts, Mississippi, Nebraska, New Hampshire, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Rhode Island, South Dakota, Texas, Utah, West Virginia, and West Virginia. So, 12 plus 21, what's that? That is 33. 33 states. In which it may become difficult for independents to vote. Is that okay? I thought this was supposed to be... Now, remember, I'm not saying that independents don't vote in the general election. Everybody's allowed to vote in the general election, but it's the primaries in which they can't vote. And if independents are being allowed to select the candidate who they think they want to represent themselves, then that's not okay. Sure, they can do it well, once everybody else has done it, once the primaries are over and it's the general election, their choice is narrowed down from three to four candidates, usually, unless you look at the Republicans this year and they had like a whole bunch. Or on the Democratic side, it was just two. But say if somebody wanted to vote for Hillary or Bernie and they were an independent, then they couldn't do it. Or if they wanted to vote for Trump or Cruz or anybody else on the Republican side, they wouldn't have been able to do it because you know, they couldn't because they were independents. But now that it's coming up on a general election, of course they can vote. But guess what? Those independents, they didn't get to select the candidate that they wanted to represent them right now. 
All they got to do is they, they got to pick between two candidates who most of America hates anyway. So, had the independents been able to vote, would they have changed things? Possibly. But, we're only talking about the primaries here. So, it's not that big of a deal. But it is, at the same time. Because, maybe things would have been different. Maybe the two candidates that we have right now wouldn't have been the same two people. Maybe we would be looking at a different type of election right now. Maybe it would be an election that's not nearly as dangerous as it could be to America. But no. Because of closed primaries in certain states, and 33 to be exact, we have the current situation. And that is a really crappy choice. Either you're stuck voting for Hillary, who a lot of people don't like because they think that she has issues with being trusted, or you're voting for Trump, who everybody pretty much can agree on, besides the people who vote for him. For some reason I can't think of right now. We're stuck with these two candidates. And it might have been because independents can't vote. But I think we need to fix this problem. Independents should be allowed to vote in primaries. They're just like everybody else. Wasn't this country founded upon the values of one person, one vote? I have another topic I'd like to talk about on the same type of deal. But I'm not going to talk about that in this video. And it's already started and come off <laughs> close to the point where I'm going to have to stop this video because it's getting way too long. In fact, we're getting to 12 minutes. So I'm just going to say this one last thing. What we really need to do right now is we need to fix the voting system. We need to make sure primaries in America are a place where everybody can vote. Everybody and who's of voting age that is. I personally think the voting age should be reduced down to 16, but that's just my personal opinion. And that would take a long time to do. But, that's all I really got to say. If you're 18, and you get the chance to vote in the primary, eventually someday, because it's not going to be today, and you're in an independent then you should try to do it because it's your right and for some reason some governments of these states want to take you right away and I say that to any independent out there you should get your right to vote back at least get the right to vote back in the primaries because you already have it in the general election and if you are an independent make your voice heard in the general election make people know what this selection means. Make people know that you're out there and make the right decision. And vote. Because independence, you matter as well. Not just Democrats, not just Republicans, not just Libertarians, but independents and other third party voters out there. You all do matter. And it's time for you to go out there and take your rights back. Peace. Also, happy 4th of July. I just thought this was a good day to make a video about voting rights in America.